Appendix of The Life of Thomas Lord Cochrane, Tenth Earl of Dundonald, Completing the Autobiography of a Seaman, Volume 2, by Henry Richard Fox Bourne, and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Timothy Ferguson. Appendix. Captain Abney Hastings' Letters to Lord Cochrane. So much has been said in the body of this volume in evidence of the insurmountable difficulties raised by the Greeks themselves to Lord Cochrane's efforts to aid them as efficiently as he desired, that there seemed no room without wearying the reader for their citing more than two or three of the letters addressed to him by Captain Abney Hastings. They have, therefore, been reserved for quotation here. Their publication is desirable for two reasons. In the first place, they show how Captain Hastings, whom all the historians of the Greek Revolution join in praising, was harassed and his work rendered almost useless by causes which Lord Cochrane, in a much more difficult position, was blamed for not overcoming. In the second place, they will serve as a contribution to the biography of a high-minded and valiant man, a sharer in Lord Cochrane's zealous efforts on behalf of Greece, and in the misfortunes incident thereto, of whose memorable career the world knows little. 1. Katerina, Hydra, March 26th, 1827. My Lord, the usual contrarieties of the machine prevented my following you yesterday according to your desire. Observing you went to Poros, I thought I should act in conformity with your wishes by coming here to take in coals and avoid all possible delay. I have got on board enough for about four days more. I have expected you all day, and not seeing you, I have taken upon myself to depart for the service you have destined me for, although I am not quite certain I know the exact station. I shall go off Grabusa and endeavour to find Captain St. George. I leave a letter here for the primates, requesting them to load a small vessel with coals for my return which I wish to take in on the opposite side. This measure, far from occasioning delay, would be advantageous in that respect, as well as having less close connection with the Hydriots, whose presence always has the effect of setting a bad example to the Greeks I have on board. I should feel obliged to your lordship to insist on this measure. Perhaps it would be advantageous for your lordship to decide upon the port you intend to occupy immediately, and send there all the coals and other stores wanted for your naval force. Since you object to an island in the great archipelago, I am of the opinion, with Colonel Gordon, that Ambalaki is best suited for your station. If all the coals were there, much delay would be saved to the steam vessels. One of the causes our engine went so badly was that some fire bars being burnt, the fire fell through, and we could not keep up the steam. Another was I had taken up the paddles, which previously had two feet dip, six inches, the engine consequently went faster, but the pumps would not supply sufficient water. I have lowered them again. Pray have your further orders for me here, as I shall touch for coals, as aforesaid, on my return. I have the honour to be, etc. F. A. Hastings. 2. Katerina, Poros, April ninth, 1827. My lord, I have the honour to transmit you an account of the Katerina steam vessel up to March 16th, by which you will perceive that, with the £500 credit I have on Mrs. Bayford's ante, I still have a credit of $363 in my favour. Not accustomed to keep such accounts, there may be errors, but if any, they are certainly against myself, as I may have omitted charging expenses, whereas I have never charged but what was really expended, nor have I ever charged anything for myself, directly or indirectly. Wages will become due again the 16th of this month, for which I shall require about $800. Having but a few days' salt meat on board, I beg your lordship to cause an order to be written, enabling me to receive such quantity as you may deem requisite. I have the honour to be, etc., F. A. Hastings. 3. Katerina, Scopolo, April the 19th, N.S. 1827. My lord, northerly winds prevented my passing Cape Doro until the 15th. Having spoken a vessel from Skyro, I learnt that an Austrian merchant vessel loaded with corn and ammunition for Negropont was laying at that island under convoy of an Austrian vessel of war, and that the corvette of Tombasi was there watching the merchant vessel. I touched at Skyro the night of the 15th, and found that the Austrian was gone, supposed for Syra, followed by a Hydriot schooner of Condoriotes, who is supposed to have made some agreement with the Austrian to deliver the cargo to him. The Greek corvette had sailed, as I was told, for this. I arrived here the night of the 16th and found the brig and schooner were zealously employed on the service they had been sent upon. Having steamed more than I had at first intended, I was in want of fuel and set them to work here to obtain me wood. 
which they have done with more alacrity than I expected during Easter holidays. The engine, of course, required repairs. I sent off the schooner to inform the vessels of the blockade, when I should join them, and appoint a rendezvous. I sail immediately and hope to take or destroy the vessels at Trecheri and Volo tomorrow. I send this by way of the primates of the island, who carry a letter to your lordship offering their services. They have been apparently much opposed in all these islands by the heroes of the earth, and are anxious to obtain protection from the naval force. This island is fertile, and could, and could be made to, pay well for protection. The others have claims equally strong for protection. St. George, Deskiro, Scopolo, Scatho, etc., etc., have more than 2,000 Liapis quartered upon them at this moment. If Athens is relieved, these worthies might be turned into Negropont with much effect. I am told the Turkish transports are still at Trecheri and Volo, not doubting to clear the Gulf of Greeks, a force to Argent. However, I hope to be with them tomorrow. I suspect fuel could be obtained cheaper here than at Megara, and I see no reason for incurring the expense of transport of wood to Poros for construction of gunboats when a great majority of the Greek vessels are constructed here. The wood does not grow here, it is brought from Agora on the main. The deputies, to Bertscon en son, can inform your lordship of these things. I have the honour to be, etc., F. A. Hastings. P.S. Having taken the coals out from between the boilers and side of the ship, I am anxious to fill this space with wool as a protection against shot. The coals stowed there are an inconvenience for many reasons, and something is necessary to replace them as a protection for the boilers. If your lordship would be good enough to order Tombasi to procure me wool for that purpose, I think you would be ultimately satisfied of its utility. 4. Caterina of Chichere, Monday, 23rd, N.S., 1827. My lord, I have the honour to inform you that, in pursuance of your orders, I carry the squadron under my command, consisting of the corvette Themistocles, Brig Aris, Schooner Aspana, and Schooner Panea, before the port of Volo, the evening of the 20th. I found eight vessels at anchor in the port, Immediately, I directed the Themistocles and Arras to anchor off a battery at the point and cannonade it, whilst I entered the harbour with boats and schooners. At 4.30pm, they anchored with much gallantry and soon silenced the musket shot from the battery. At the same moment, I entered the harbour with the boats and schooners, and we shortly took possession of seven brigs. They were all on shore and most without sails bent. However, by 9pm we succeeded in getting out five prizes, three loaded with provisions and ammunition, two light, and this most fortunately without the loss of a man killed or wounded, although we lay at anchor in the harbour for four hours and a half, exposed to the fire of the castle of Volo. The ship received no material injury, although several shots struck her. We set fire to two prizes we could not succeed in getting out. One light brig remains that we shot away her foremast and did such damage in her hull as will, I hope, prevent her putting to sea again. Last night I entered Trecheri with the boats of Themistocles, Aris and, Asp and Aspasia to endeavour to carry out a brig of war, Turkish, of sixteen guns and two mortars, but found her protected too advantageously by batteries and musketry. I sent the prizes to your lordship under the convoy of the Aspasia, and shall remain here a few days to endeavour to destroy the Turkish brig of war, and shall then return to join your lordship. I beg leave to assure your lordship, before I conclude, that in these affairs I have met with the most cordial support from the captains of the vessels under my orders, and their conduct, as well as that of all the officers and men of the squadron, has been highly meritorious. I have the honour to be, etc., F. A. Hastings, P.S., as the schooner Panaia will participate in the prizes, I have ordered her to remain on the blockade, although not sent by your lordship. 5. Caterina at Sea, April 24th, 1827. My lord, an hour after I had the honour of sending you my last letter, detailing the affair of Volo, I stood in to Trecheri, with the vessels under my command, viz. the Mostocles Aris Panaia. The Turks in this place had one brig of war, which, erroneously, in my last, I rated at sixteen guns, mounted but fourteen long twenty-four pounders and two mortars. She was made fast in a small bight with a plank on shore, and high rocks on each side of her, behind which were posted a strong corps of Albanian troops, 
she was likewise protected by a battery close under her bow and five other batteries in other parts four small schooners lay quite hauled up on the beach to attempt to carry away vessels so posted and defended by men who wanted neither alacrity nor resolution would have been exposing the lives of the crews in a very unwarrantable manner i therefore resolved to burn the brig which was effected in less than an hour i did not make any attempt upon the schooners which i considered too inconsiderable to justify a loss in capturing them in this affair the captains officers and crews conducted themselves all much to my satisfaction enclosed i have the honour to transmit to you a return of the killed and wounded in this affair which i am happy to say is trifling i have left the rest of the squadron to maintain the blockade i have the honour to be etc f a hastings a return of the killed and wounded on board the greek squadron at trichery april eleventh katerina killed one seaman ralph hall arras killed one seaman arras wounded two seamen panayi wounded one seaman total two killed and three wounded f a hastings seven katerina at sea april twenty sixth n s eighteen twenty seven my lord passing by kumi i observed several vessels at anchor there and a great number of large kayaks etc hauled up on the beach i stood in and overhauled them and found as i suspected that a most scandalous and extensive commerce in grain is carrying on to that place with the turks chiefly in greek vessels a brig under russian colours was chiefly discharged a saurian schooner was nearly full and the magazines on shore were full i set about loading the grain from the magazines but was unable to take off more than one-third of what was in them i have good reason for supposing that other magazines equally stored are to be found in the town about an hour's distance here there were only a dozen turks who fled at our approach in the evening no less than nine small vessels were standing in to kumi i weighed and boarded six of them three being entirely empty i allowed to pass two i detained and have brought with me the want of men of time etc has prevented my putting a finishing hand to this infamous traffic but i have no doubt your lordship will see the propriety of sending a vessel of war without delay to destroy these depots it is idle to talk of blockading the gulf of negropont whilst such an extensive commerce is carrying on at other points of the island i have the honour to be etc f a hastings seven katerina poros april twenty eighth eighteen twenty seven my lord captain st george going to join you i take the opportunity of informing you besides what my other letters contain that my information from kumi imports that negropont contains two months provision for the army of Katai and fortresses and that all their hopes are in the turkish fleet expected daily it seems to me of the first importance that the greek fleet should be ready to counter the turks and the gulf is a place particularly favourable to the smaller lighter and more skilful party might i suggest my lord the propriety of sending a couple of light vessels upon whom you could depend to cruise off the dardanelles and give information in time the corvette brig and schooner off to cherry requested me to represent their want of provisions and the necessity they have of paying their crew regularly many i suspect have already quitted them with greek sailors no arrears of pay can exist hitherto they have been accustomed to receive their wages in advance if they can be made to go to sea without that advance it is a great point gained to omit fulfilling the engagement would ruin all confidence and oblige the sailors to return to their ancient demands with respect to kumi i beg leave to urge the necessity of sending a vessel perhaps better captain st george than a greek who probably would not dare do his duty there was he so disposed to destroy the infamous traffic existing there may i beg of your lordship to order here the marine tribunal from napoli to adjudge the prizes taken also to issue a public order respecting the distribution of prize money by which i may be guided in my payments you will observe that in my latter respecting the affair of trichery i mentioned simply having burnt the brig of war without saying how that letter being a dispatch for publication i thought it well not to proclaim to the enemy that we made use of red-hot shot it was by those i burnt the brig and i could quite as easily burn by the same means the largest ship ever built might i suggest the advantage that would result from using the same projectile with almost every ship each vessel might as well as me have a furnace in her hold for the feeding of two of her guns the effect would be tremendous if the fleet was ready before the turks came out a slight excursion to salonica might be attended with profit and advantage 
I shall require a little time to repair damages. I have lost my larboard cat head, my jim boom, second topmast, main gaff, bowsprit shot through, and the engine requires various repairs. The steam waste pipe is completely gone, and I must get another made. I hope and trust your lordship has still the intention of forming a national fleet and a dockyard. Without this, your difficulties will be amplified beyond measure. I merely mention this because I hear intrigues are on foot to prevent such measures. I, a stranger who belong to no party, and who neither fear nor love the Hydriots and Spetsiots, will tell you the truth on these points, although your orders prescribed for me to remain a fortnight on the blockade of the Gulf of Negropont, I was forced to return, wanting ammunition, fuel, provisions, and various repairs. I shall use my endeavours to be ready for sea as speedily as possible. Before I conclude, give me leave to congratulate your lordship upon your brilliant success at the Piraeus. I have no doubt it is but a prelude to more important successes. I have the honour to be, etc., F. A. Hastings. 8. Caterina, Poros, April 30th, 1827. My lord, may I beg leave to present to you my very particular friend, Mr. Niccolo Calogi. You will find him a young man of good education, talent, and, what is of still greater value, of great probity. I have known him many years, and esteemed him equally long. By his private fortune, he is independent, and has consequently always refused to meddle in the intrigues he regrets so much to see cause the misfortunes of his country. So much for introduction. Mr. Niccolo Kellogi has been good enough to wait upon you to receive your orders respecting the prize I have lately captured. These vessels contain grain chiefly, and therefore would, in that state, be of no use to you. Your commissaries must turn it into biscuit before it is sent to the Piraeus. The government has sent for the Admiralty Court from Napoli to sit there upon the judgment of vessels detained. As to the sales, I am of opinion that to appease the jealousy of the seamen, a public sale should be held, and your commissaries purchase it if they please. They will thus always obtain it cheaper than they could buy it at Syra, and thus nobody can complain. I am anxious to receive from your lordship an order respecting the distribution of prize money, and this, I think, should be public. Hitherto the government has received 15% upon all prizes. Of course, your lordship will arrange as you think proper upon this subject, but if any part of a prize goes to the public purse, it is only but just it should aid in the payment of the wages of seamen. I am now paying a month's wages out of my own pocket, which I hope and trust your lordship will reimburse me, as I cannot continue this system. Anything can be done in Greece by prompt payments. With arrears, nothing is to be done. My friend has much and various information respecting every part of Greece, and can furnish you with much useful matter. I do not doubt, but you will shortly appreciate his merit. I have the honour to be, etc. F. A. Hastings. P.S. May I beg of you, my lord, to furnish me with a commission of lieutenant for Mr. Darby, the only officer doing duty as a sailor on board. In truth, he is no sailor, and does not pretend, but he is brave, diligent, and a gentleman, and has served with me for about four months. 9. Caterina Poros, April 30th, 1827. My lord, I had the honour to receive your orders on the 28th instant, your lordship will have observed by the letters I had the honour of transmitting to you that the condition of this vessel is such as to render it impossible for her to put to sea immediately. Dr. Goss last night was occupied sending you off 68 pounders, and I am happy to hear this morning that the monastery has fallen without them. I must again repeat how indispensable it is that this fleet should be in readiness to encounter the Turks who cannot now delay long their departure. It is with deep regret I see the extreme discontent existing on board the Sauveur Brig, which seems to me to be greatly augmented, if not entirely, owing to the Greeks being paid in advance and the English being in arrears of wages. In this country, my lord, I must repeat, nothing can be done without regular payments. By paying out of my own funds when others could not be obtained, I have established the confidence of the Greeks and English in this vessel as far as money is concerned, but I cannot continue to pay out of my own pocket, if funds are not forthcoming for the wages of this vessel, I must beg leave to resign. Whilst I am on board, my people will always consider me personally responsible for their wages, and I must again remark that I have suffered already much too severely in my private fortune to admit of making any further sacrifices. Besides wages for the crew, I have various expenses here to repair damage sustained by the vessel. I have the honour to be, etc., F. A. Hastings. P.S. 
It seems to be necessary to relieve the vessels at Volo, or they will quit their station. Greek sailors on board their own ships will not remain more than a month at sea. 10. Katerina Poros, May the 6th, 1827. My lord, I do myself the honour of enclosing for your perusal two different extracts from public papers sent me lately from Zante. I am now ready for sea, excepting powder, of which I have only two quarter casks of very vile French stuff received from Captain St. George. Mr. Hesketh, among other prizes made at Napoli, has brought some flannel cartridges for our guns, filled, and forty casks of powder. Would your lordship have the goodness to cause an order to be sent to me to receive this powder? There is still a great quantity of the stores sent out from England missing. I have the bills of lading, and can give copies to Mr. Hesketh, if you think proper, to send to Hydra, Spetsas, and Napoli again to collect them. I suspect the Hydriots have now in their possession about 160 carbines, such as I have on board. It appears strange to everybody here that all the commissary department should be absent. I am informed provisions are wanted, and yet nobody comes to buy the prize provisions. As every Greek is by nature a thief, things disappear daily, and if they remain much longer, nothing will be forthcoming. Already my Greeks have petitioned me about the prizes, and everybody, acquainted with Greek sailors, must be aware they will not go to sea again until they have been paid their prize money. Till now, there was never an example of a ship quitting her prize until sold, and the proceeds distributed. I am sorry to be obliged to remind your lordship again that on my arrival here i paid my crew one month's wages due the sixteenth of last month and in ten days more another month's wages are due and pay i must for as i have frequently remarked to your lordship no arrears can exist in this country the wages also is not the only expense i was obliged to purchase about one hundred tons of firewood at scopulio fresh meat in harbours runs away with great sums and when the engine works it consumes about half a dollar a day of oil besides all this i have been obliged to hire three carpenters for ten days to repair the damages done in late expedition i had a fluke shot off a bower anchor at trecheri and ought to have another one i must get a new mainsail made here it is very disagreeable to me to torment your lordship with all these statements but you must be aware that a vessel like this cannot be sailed without great expense there are here a number of seamen from the brig who want to enter with me I have as yet refused to receive them, but if you thought it proper to give me an order, I should then be justified in doing so. I have the honour to be, etc. F. A. Hastings. 9. Katerina, Spetsas, May 30th, 1827. My lord, having lost two masts in a squall off Cape Malia, and having business at Poros requiring my presence, I have thought it the most expeditious way to go myself to purchase other masts at Hydra, and settle my affairs at Poros. I therefore do myself the honour to transmit to your lordship a report of my proceedings after you left me near Stemfane. At sunset I lighted the fires, and as soon as steam was up, steered for the passage between Zante and Maria. The wind freshening much in a contrary direction, I found myself about ten miles to the southward of Zante in the morning. About 3 a.m. we perceived a large vessel standing towards us from the Maria, and went to quarters for her. I thought at first she might be the Hellas, but on approaching she stood back to the mainland, which made me conclude that it was a stranger. The wind increasing, I could not remain, head to wind, and made sail under the lee of Zante. In the forenoon I saw a large ship under the land, far off, steering to the south, which I concluded was a Turkish or neutral ship of war. The wind abating, I steamed up round the eastern point of Zante, and not finding the Hellas on the other side of the island, I stood towards Cephalonia, opening out the two Turkish frigates laying at Clarenza. In the evening I saw a large ship, very far astern, coming northward, and supposed she was the Hellas, and the same I had seen in the forenoon under the land. At sunset I altered courses, and steered for Clarenza, and in the first watch we saw a good deal of firing in that direction. The wind and sea augmenting, I was unable to keep the ship head on to sea, and therefore bore up for the rendezvous at Oxia. Not finding the Hellas at this station, the wind augmenting, the starboard wheel being out of repair and threatening to come to pieces if not looked to, the water requiring to be drawn off the boilers, etc., all these things made it necessary for me to search a port. I looked inside Oxia, but found it unsafe and therefore bore up under the port of Petala, where I put things to rights as well as I could, but found on examination 
we had but three days and a half's coals, little water, and only a few days' bread. Under these circumstances, I felt myself called upon to return, whilst the means were still left to me of hoping to accomplish it. Having obtained an offing west of Cephalonia, I took off the paddle and sailed, which gave us an opportunity of again repairing the wheels, again in an unsound condition, and saved our fuel. The wind and sea calming, I got up my steam, and there being every appearance of calm weather, I stood within five or six miles of Modon, hoping to meet the two frigates we saw off there when we passed northward. However, we saw nothing but a brig inside the harbour, sailing close along the land. Late on the evening of the 28th, when rounding Cape St. Angelo, a squall from the high land carried away our fore and second masts, and left us in a very unenviable situation, considering we had but a few hours' calls on board. However, a breeze favouring us all night, we arrived here at 10 a.m., 29th of May. Upon the foremast, we lost one man, Yanni Patiniotti. I have the honour to be, etc., F. A. Hasting. 12. Caterina, Spetsas, June 7th, N.S., 1827. My lord, I had the honour of sending you a report of my proceedings since I left you, and hope to have found you here on my return from Poros, that I might receive your further orders. I returned last night, having been subjected to more delay and vexation than can be imagined or expressed, respecting the prizes taken at Volo. I could only procure one mast at Poros, sold me by Tom Barsi. Others there were both at Hydra and Poros, but the proprietors would not part with them. I have therefore been obliged to purchase one here, considerably too large and expensive, but there is no remedy. I hope to be ready for sea in three days, but fear I shall have some embarrassment about money matters. The purchase of masts, of salt provisions, sails, etc., besides the pay due to the crew, puts me to considerable straits, particularly as I had lent all the ready money I possessed to Kellogy to redeem his brother. However, I shall do my utmost to get to sea, and I am anxious to know how, when, and where I can have the honour of rejoining your lordship. A fireship that departs today will deliver you this letter, and your lordship may perhaps think it worth while to send a vessel here with orders for my further guidance. May I beg of you also to add a private signal by which I may know all Greek vessels at a tolerable distance by day, also a night private signal. The British squadron is assembled at Smyrna, awaiting the Admiral. The camp at Phalerum is broken up, and General Church is returned to Aegina. The puppet of government is occupied, voting for the nomination of ministers, if possible more incapable than themselves. They talk of going to Napoli, Greva, and Photomans propose this. The former, as usual, seized upon an American ship, and Dr. Howe, charged with the distribution of the cargo, applied to Captain Patterson of the Constitution, who is now at Napoli guarding it. I am sorry to add that Mr. Lee received a letter from England announcing that the Enterprise, having sailed, her boilers burst opposite Plymouth, and she was towed into that port by a brig of war. I have the honour to be, etc., F. A. Hastings. 13. Katerina, Spetsas, June 9th, 1827. My lord, I had the honour to receive your order of the 7th, enjoining me to repair to your lordship without delay, if ready for sea. A variety of circumstances, unavoidable in a country deprived of even the shadow of organisation, has prevented my being yet ready to sail. I received my foremast on board today, but the majority and best of my crew has left me. I must look for others and intend to wait tonight and go to Poros, where I was tormented by hundreds to take them. Here I can get men, but shall confine myself to a half-dozen, as I find it necessary to mix my crew. In going to Poros I shall not delay anything, since I shall be occupied getting up my masts and rigging there, making sails, etc., etc., en route, and I can water more easily at Poros than here. I have informed the captain of the brig that brought this, that if I am ready to sail before any further orders of yours arrive, I shall repair to Keragoto and await their instructions from you. If I am not at Keragoto, I shall be found here." I have the honour to be, etc., F. A. Hastings. 14. Katerina, Syrah, August the 1st, 1827. My lord, in hopes of seeing your lordship here, I have waited two days, since which, although not finished, all the work of our machinery can be done on board. There are two things which retain me, namely money, of which I require about $700, and the fire bars, which they continually civilly refuse me, acting the true Greek, or in other words, the dog in the manger. If your lordship remains long absent, I shall be sadly puzzled how to act. Without new firebars, we cannot steam again. The local authorities here are so afraid of the Hydriots and Spetsiots that they dare not take any steps against them. To leave this without the firebars is useless. 
if i can obtain these bars and your lordship does not arrive i will pay myself the necessary sum to get the vessel out of this port hoping you will reimburse me but to go without the bars is only going to return again what i can do to forward the service i will gladly perform and anxious enough i am to get away from this place i have the honour to be etc f a hastings fifteen katerina poros august the nineteenth eighteen twenty seven my lord on my arrival here i wrote to hydra to request the local authorities there to send me the necessary coals since you do not wish the last cargo to be used i have received no answer and upon inquiring yesterday from persons arrived from hydra i find they are not taking any measures to forward them to me my officer wrote me under the date of the fifteenth from napoli that he hoped to be able to cast the bars there in which case i shall have to wait for the coals from hydra the impertinence of these shopkeepers has at length attained a pitch that is scarcely endurable it is to be hoped that your lordship will make them send their coals bracket, the remainder is lost Close bracket. sixteen katerina poros august the twentieth eighteen twenty seven my lord i am delighted to find that you have an expedition in progress this vessel shall be ready to accompany your lordship whether i can get the bars cast at napoli or not the ones we now have can be made to answer for twenty-four hours i shall ride to napoli to order the engineers to be here by the twenty-third whether they succeed in casting the bars or not the coals i wrote for from hydra are government coals and it is well they should be used the first as i have been informed they are greatly diminishing without our consumption i should like to complete as speedily as possible and there is no time to spare between this and the twenty-fourth for shipping one hundred tons of coal from hydra i have the honour to be etc f a hastings seventeen katerina poros august twenty second eighteen twenty seven my lord i am making a sail according to your lordship's plan to become the hull of the ship but want sailcloth for completing it i understand i sure caring has some in store would your lordship be kind enough to allow me to take a hundred peaks i have a good deal of very bad french powder on board and even of turkish i suspect put into french barrels which i received from methana could your lordship permit me to exchange it against english powder it is of very great importance that our cartridge powder should be good i have the honour to be etc f a hastings eighteen katerina gulf of lepanto september the twenty seventh eighteen twenty seven my lord i have the honour to transmit you a report of the proceedings from the day i left you till this moment captain thomas of the savoie joined me the twenty first and proposed with much gallantry to go into the gulf in the daytime the wind being unusually out at night i consented with some difficulty in consequence of the little dependence i can place on my engine which might render it impossible for me to follow him immediately the savoir the gunboat Bavarois in tow and accompanied by two schooners who had left to keep blockade at missolonghi but who contrary to my knowledge thus disobeyed your orders passed into the gulf in the evening of the twenty first in most gallant style in despite of the enemy's very formidable batteries and one brig of war and two schooners at the maria castles and several vessels at lepanto i attempted to steam in that night but the engine failed me within two miles of the castles the next day the wind being strong in i attempted to sail in but when within gunshot of the castles the wind failed me and it was not until the evening of the twenty third that i could get past towing after me the phil helene gunboat of whose commander i have always had particular occasion to be satisfied all our damage amounted to a few ropes cut on communicating with the maria the twenty fourth i was informed that the enemy had nine vessels at salons and there were three austrians there that captain thomas had attacked them on the twenty third but in consequence of unfavourable weather he had not made any impression and that he was retired to lutraki i immediately dispatched a mystico to desire captain thomas to join me with all the vessels he could collect but not seeing him on the twenty sixth and fearing that the turks might strengthen themselves during a delay i stood in on the twenty sixth with the gunboat phil helene but we no sooner approached than the wind came so strong out that we could not keep the ship head to wind and found it necessary to retire the turks have as someone's a very fine algerine schooner brig of fourteen guns a brig of sixteen guns bearing an admiral's flag three smaller schooners two armed transport brigs and two large boats with guns and they have a battery on shore there are also three austrians while under their fire one of my engineers was slightly wounded i am now waiting for the arrival of captain thomas for whom i have sent again and am preparing for a final trial 
I have the honour to be, etc. F. A. Hastings. 19. Caterina Lutraki, October the 7th, 1827. My Lord, Captain Thomas arrived here after our affair at Salons with the prizes, and sent off immediately to Poros for provisions and ammunition. I could not, withstanding your orders for him to remain only seven days in the Gulf, allow him to depart in the state he then was, having only five days' provisions and four cartridges a gun. He received some powder and provisions yesterday, and in consequence of your order of the 27th, which he received yesterday, departs immediately. If the length of the time Captain Thomas has remained in the Gulf is contrary to your intentions, I am alone responsible. He was always anxious to depart. My crew is in a very discontented state in consequence of the month being expired without their receiving their wages. Twelve have left me, and if I do not get money, I fear the whole crew will follow their example. I have sent an officer to Poros for provisions, ammunition, and money if possible. I understand the English are about to prevent any offensive operations of General Church, and if not, he would never be able to undertake any, situated as he is for money and provisions. This seems to render my remaining here any longer of no use. As soon as I can get any money and provisions and arrange about the prizes, I will quit the Gulf, but as I have no orders from you where to go, I shall return to Poros unless you contrive to send me some directions in the interim. I have the honour to be, etc., F. A. Hastings. 20. Katerina Utraki, October the 8th, 1827. My lord, I have the honour to receive your letter of the 3rd, and am happy to hear that the enterprise is arrived. I have also received $1,000 with the stores, etc., which are very acceptable. I dispatched this savoir yesterday, according to your order of the 27th ultimate. I still retain the gunboats, which are very useful. I wish further orders from your lordship to know whether we are to remain in the gulf, and if you wish us to go out. There is yet at the castles a brig and three or four Turkish schooners. I do not exactly know their position. I intend to run down there one of these days and see what can be done with them. If close under the walls of the castles, which are very strong, we could burn them some dark night, if you would send me a dozen rockets. I would go with a small boat close to them and do their business, Mr. Hain announces to me that your lordship proposes coming up to Corinth, in which case I will do myself the honour of waiting upon you and receiving your further orders. I have dispatched a gunboat to General Church to inform him of your intention and to bring him here if he wishes to confer with your lordship. I have the honour to be, etc., F. A. Hastings. 21. Katerina Lutraki, October the 14th, 1827. My lord, Mr. Hain writes me that the Turkish fleet is off Patras, from time to time I have received vague accounts of vessels off there, but nothing certain. I shall fortify myself either here or at the port on the other side, under the village of Perizora. I think the latter. I want fuses for shells. A box was sent, I suppose in mistake, for fuses, but it contained blue lights. Pray give an officer an order to send me at least 500 fuses. In my last, your lordship, I mentioned of what service rockets would be to us as a means of attack of the enemy's vessels at the castles they will be of no less service as weapons of defence pray my lord let me have as large a quantity as possible i understood you were coming to corinth which has detained me here or i would by this have been at the other end of the gulf to gain information and see after the brig for i fear thomas is not too prudent i have just been informed that much cannonading was heard in the quarter of lepanto the day before yesterday i hope no misfortune has befallen him I have the two gunboats and one mystico out to bring me information, and I can receive nothing. Pray let me have the rockets. I have the honour to be, etc. F. A. Hastings. 22. Caterina Put Strava, Gulf of Lepanto, October the 17th, 1827. My lord, not having received any orders from your lordship, I am still in the Gulf. In consequence of an order from your lordship to Captain Thomas, I dispatched the Sauveur on the 7th instant and sent the gunboat Phil Helene with her, with letters to General Church and orders to wait, and bring me information how the server got past the castles, for I was a good deal anxious on her account, and should have gone myself to give her any assistance in case of need, but that I understood you intended coming over to Corinth. Mr. Hain, bringing me letters from General Church, I dispatched the other gunboat, Bavaroise, with these, and also some for Sauveur, in case she was still in the Gulf. Mr. Darby, the commander of the Bavaroise, had directions to bring General Church if he was anxious to communicate personally with your lordship. Day after day, I awaited anxiously an answer, till at length the mystico I had sent three days ago to General Church to learn something of the fleet outside, which Mr. Hain wrote me for certain was Turkish, returned yesterday evening, informing me that the server and two gunboats had gone out on Wednesday. 
General Church writes me that he positively intends passing into Rumelia and wants my aid, but I am now quite alone except the Mystico, with whom I know not what to do. He continually applies to me for provisions and will soon probably for money. What am I to do about him? Although wishing to aid General Church and the service in all I can, I must acknowledge I have no confidence in his intended movement, more particularly as he tells me he has no provisions and wants me to seize by force what I find in boats. All I could get by this discreditable way of raising provisions would not certainly feed 100 men for three days and therefore could not aid General Church and would be a gratuitous vexation of these miserable peasantry. If General Church had money and provisions, much is to be done in Romelia, but without these nothing can be achieved anywhere. As soon as I have got the prizes back to Latraki and formed batteries, I will go and visit General Church and learn more particulars, but I am very anxious for some orders from your lordship. Having received nothing but the official letter of thanks since I left you, I write in haste and beg your lordship to let me have an answer as soon as possible. I have the honour to be, etc., F. A. Hastings. 23. Caterina Lutraki, October twenty seventh, 1827. My lord, I am ready to do all and anything for the good of the service, but I fear General Church has no means. I had him on board for two days, making reconnaissances round the gulf, and from what I can gather, the money, said to be at Corfo, is a chimera. I suspect he has not a shilling anywhere and cannot stir. He talks, it is true, of expeditions, and I have always assured him of my readiness to aid him, but we cannot be consuming months after months in the hopes of receiving supplies. I must limit the period of this embarkation, and if he cannot then act, I think I shall be justified in quitting him. I shall try, however, to destroy the other vessels in the Gulf first. We are in great want of fire bars. I am laying in a stock of wood, but we have not yet been able to succeed perfectly with it. I have taken out the bars and filled the ash pits. This, we find, does better than with any bars in, but we cannot as yet hope to keep the steam up with it. I hope, however, ultimately to succeed. In fact, our calls are nearly finished. To show you how General Church goes on, his gunboat has only advanced 20 feet from the beach, and yet he will not send away that swindler Allen who commands her. I told him I would not meddle with her until he dismissed that man, and things remain thus. General Church, while on board, received letters announcing the unlooked-for destruction of the Turkish fleet, Still, I have not entirely credited it, and I am in anxious expectation of some decisive information about it. I am obliged to your lordship for the fuses, and hoped to have had also some rockets. We are beginning to get short again of provisions, viz. biscuit. The loaded prize is condemned with a ridiculous clause for me to pay the crew. They say nothing of the other vessels. I send Captain Hayne to Agena to hasten the condemnation of the light vessels, and counteract the intrigues which I have no doubt Tombasi has recommenced. I shall also endeavour by him to have more biscuit. We have now but for a fortnight. I have the honour to be, etc., F. A. Hastings. 24. Caterina Lutraki, November the 8th, 1827. My lord, the general church has at length put himself in motion. Some provisions and money have arrived on the other side for him, I mean at Kalamaki, and I hope to sail with it, to join him tonight. I fortunately received a fortnight's provisions yesterday, when I had only one day's biscuit on board. After destroying, or ascertaining that I cannot destroy, the vessels at Lepanto, I will go outside the Gulf and blockade Missolonghi, Patras, and the Gulf, hoping the General will blockade them by land. I fear much, however, for provisions. I will endeavour to get some from the Ionian Islands, but money and everything else is scarce with me." But I hear your lordship is in the same predicament, and therefore I cannot complain. May I beg of your lordship to grant a commission to Naval Lieutenant Monsieur Falanga, who has served on board this vessel from the 29th of March, 1827, and is a most deserving officer. He is the only sailor officer I have, and was always the only one of any use in that capacity. He behaved extremely well, both at Volo, Treceri, and Salona, at which latter place he was wounded in the neck with a musket ball, while setting fire to one of the abandoned vessels. I may really say he is the only Greek I ever saw who seems to conceive what an officer ought to be. Although he would be a great loss to me, and I should be sorry to part with him, but for his own advantage, I can strongly recommend him for promotion in the command of a vessel, since, as I hear, your lordship is in such dreadful want of officers to command. I am sure he would give you the highest satisfaction. I have the honour to be, etc., F. A. Hastings. 25. Caterina, November the 17th, 1827. 
My lord, I have the honour to announce to you that after much delay and disappointment, usual in Greece, I am about to proceed to Levanto tomorrow and endeavour to destroy the Turkish vessels there. I then go outside to pass General Church over into Remilia and afterwards blockade Missolonghi, Patras and Lepanto. The want of gunboats here is much felt by me at this moment, as in going out I must leave the gulf to the Turks, who, even should I be fortunate enough to destroy the enemy's vessels at Lepanto, will always have here armed boats enough to command the gulf. I must also beg of your lordship to consider us in money matters. I am now seven thousand pounds out of pocket by Greek affairs, and I am daily now expending my own money for the public service. Our prizes are serving as transports for the army, and I must either shortly abandon this important position or be paid. It is most likely that if all the important points I have mentioned could be blockaded, the Turks would soon be reduced from the blockade being so much more easily maintained than elsewhere. Without money, you must be aware that I cannot maintain this vessel, and, all to be expected from General Church, you must be aware is plenty of promises. The General is already overwhelmed with expectance, and if he had millions, would not be able to command a farthing. I will do all I can, but I must repeat, it is not quite fair I should end a beggar after all the labour, vexation and disappointment I have experienced for so many years. I have the honour to be, etc., F. A. Hastings. 26. Katerina of Cape Papas, November the 20th, 1827. My lord, I have the honour to inform you I passed the castles on the 18th with the three prizes and Mr. Cohen company. I lost two men killed and one wounded in passing. The other vessels passed without suffering any damage. It had been my intention to attack the Turkish squadron at Lepanto, but the wind was so strong on the land that I felt I could not affect my object and anxious to profit by the same wind to go out and aid the operations of the army outside and blockade the fortresses, I passed through without waiting a more favourable moment of attack. At Patras, I found a schooner whose suspicious conduct, in abstaining for a long time from hoisting any colours, and when she afterwards showed Austrian, persisting in drawing closer under the Turkish battery, induced me to fire and bring her out. After waiting a little, and finding no attention paid to my warning, I fired again and sunk her. I hear she was Austrian. I have the honour to be, etc., F. A. Hastings. 27. Katerina Patala, December the 2nd, 1827. My lord, I have the honour to write to you from Cape Papas, informing you that I had come out of the Gulf of Lepanto and was waiting to embark the troops of General Church. I now beg leave to acquaint you that I arrived at Dragomestro the day before yesterday with the three prizes, which had been serving as transports to General Church's army for six weeks. We brought over 600 soldiers, artillery, horses, etc., and I am now returning to Cape Papas to embark a second division. I heard of the gunboat Helvetia, Monsieur Fabricus, being at Catacullo, and I sent immediately to order him to join me, which he did, and is now at Cape Papas. While in Catacullo, the gunboat was attacked by a Turkish brig of 24 guns. Monsieur Fabricus defended himself with much spirit and obliged the brig to retire. I have since heard the same brig is now off Provisia. If the service here will permit my absence, I think of going to look after her. The Gulf of Lepanto is now left entirely in the hands of the Turks, and I wish to send the gunboat in to assist the expedition against Salona, but the crew, having been so long about here, suffering much hardship and without pay, are very dissatisfied. I have given the boat a new mast, anchor, cable, provisions, ammunition, etc., and I will even advance them a little money if they will go into the Gulf. I should hope, however, that your lordship will reimburse me for these expenses extra of my own vessel." As you may imagine, I am almost entirely without coals, and cannot get a sufficient quantity of the pitch pine to burn. The other pine will not answer, and therefore I am reduced to sails. General Church had ordered round here a Surreyat brig he had at Kenknows, and I wrote to M. Kering to request him to put coals on board her, which I understand M. Kering refused. From the manner in which I have been frequently treated, one would imagine this vessel was not a Greek, but an enemy's vessel. I trust your lordship will remedy this and put me on a fair footing with the other Greek national vessels. I wish your lordship could also contrive to let me have some money to cover the expenses of this vessel, which for three months that we have been absent from Poros cannot be supposed trifling, as I conceive it important under existing circumstances to keep the blockade of Patras Messalonghi and the Gulf. I will remain as long as my destitute situation will permit me. Since I have been here, I do not think any vessels have entered the Gulf. I have the honour to be, etc. F. A. Hastings. 28. Caterina Dragomestra, December the 8th, 1827. My lord, I have the honour to inform you that I have passed over the army of General Church to this port, 
amounting to about twelve hundred men with six pieces of artillery and about sixty horses mules etc the general has been joined by macri and some other captains which may have increased his force to two thousand men he is in hourly expectation of being joined by zauga and even vanacciotti is expected to come over the monastery of ligavitza on the road from arta to lepanto and missolonghi is said to have been possessed by the troops of the general this post is of importance the troops have all marched from patras to navarino and nothing remains but some albanians and the inhabitants lepanto is thinly peopled all have little provision as well as missolonghi from what i know of lepanto and the castles i am confident that if your lordship was to attack it with the squadron you command and general church was to make even a demonstration of attack by land it must fall in forty-eight hours time lepanto lies on the face of a hill open to the sea every shot and shell and rocket must tell somewhere and they would readily capitulate we must not take the monastery of the piraeus as an example at lepanto the turks have their families this particular always operates upon them but whether it did or not the place would be taken and i am not one who overrates the capabilities of the greeks i fear however that general church has other projects and such as according to my opinion are very unlikely to succeed so much so that if your lordship does not arrive or send me orders i shall return to the archipelago rather than lend myself to measures which appear to me worse than useless i must beg again of your lordship not to forget us in the way of money provisions ammunition coals etc we are now more than three months absent from poros i have the honour to be etc f a hastings twenty nine katerina of vasiladi december the twenty seventh eighteen twenty seven my lord i have now been twelve days before vasiladi and since our arrival i have every reason to believe they have neither received provisions or water the weather has usually been so bad that i have only been able to bombard it twice and the gunboat having few shot i have exchanged her thirty two for one of our sixty eights with shells since i have not been able to batter it owing to the weather i am satisfied they are now at their last shifts in the fort and if i could remain before it a week longer and bombard it for a couple of days i do not doubt it would fall into our hands i regret of all things not having the flat-bottomed gunboat here with her we could have laid the fort before this general church was to have attacked antalico and might have taken it in the first instance with little or no resistance but he delayed till too late and then came without an ounce of provisions and returned the day after to dragomestra this man is such an insufferable quack that i cannot act any longer with him he affects to command the navy as well as the army and although i have given him one or two rather rough lessons he the other day captured with a boat of his a spy of mine on his way to me and carried him off without mentioning a word of it to me the man merely came to me the other day supposing vasiladi about to surrender that he might say he took it god knows there is no merit to you unless to the boats blockading inside i have received letters to-day from the gulf and i find the expedition at Trasonia is in alarm of being blockaded by the turkish vessels at lepanto the loss of the gunboats from the gulf is almost irreparable if your lordship could send them round here with a brig it would be of infinite service i am so in want of ammunition provisions fuel etc that i hardly know what to do but if possible i will re-enter the gulf to assist them there i wrote mr finlay announcing to your lordship that if the whole squadron was to come round here i am satisfied that missolonghi patras lepanto and the castles might be taken they are much straitened for provisions at all but particularly at missolonghi and lepanto and the castles could be taken by force patras is now provisioned daily by one of church's generals naneke from zante via clarenza dr goss informs me how much you are in want of money i trust however if you obtain any i shall not be forgotten i have only received six hundred dollars from general church and my expenses have been enormous for fuel provisions etc i have the honour to be etc f a hastings thirty katerina off vasiladi december the twenty ninth eighteen twenty seven my lord i have the honour to inform you that after having transported the troops of general church from cape papas to dragomestra i undertook the blockade of vasiladi for which purpose i put in requisition the small craft after mentioned and employed them to intercept all communication with vasiladi this flotilla i placed under the orders of my first lieutenant Falanga, and on the night of the sixteenth they entered and commenced the blockade which has been so strictly observed up to this day that nothing had entered vasiladi one boat with a letter and fresh provisions was captured by our flotilla i anchored the gunboat helvetia and company outside vasiladi 
Your lordship is aware that Helvetia was armed with a long 32-pounder, which, in my opinion, is very inferior in every point of view to a 68, but indisputably so, for cannonading a fort only to be reduced by shells. For this reason, I changed a 32-pounder long gun for a 68-pounder cannonade. On the 23rd, I bombarded Vassaladi alone, the gunboat having been detached with little effect, the weather being unfavourable, nor could I recommence until today, when, considering the distance we wore off, about one and three-quarter mile, and the diminutive size of the object fired at, better practice has rarely been displayed. Four shells out of seven from the ship and gunboat exploded in, and one blew up, their magazine. I immediately ordered an assault, in which all boats took part. The Turks, intimidated by the explosion and by our attitude of attack, called for quarter, which I granted them, although they had previously forfeited their lives by firing on a flag of truce. I sent to them, with terms of capitulation." I embarked the prisoners on board this ship, and from thence conveyed them in safety to near Messalongi. They were thirty in number, and one Greek badly wounded I have retained on board to be treated by our surgeon. The original number was from forty to fifty, the deficit having been killed off by our previous cannonading, and by the explosion. I am happy, my lord, to testify to the exemplary conduct of the Greeks during the whole of this service. They have borne the fatigues and privations of a winter's blockade in open boats with extraordinary patience, and the forbearance they displayed towards the Turks rendered any interference of mine in their favour superfluous. Of my officers, Lieutenant Falanga and Captain Hain, M.A., I have only to repeat the often told tale of their notorious conduct. To Monsieur Fabricus, commanding the gunboat Helvetia, I feel much indebted for his zeal and activity, and I am happy to have so deserving an officer under my orders. The fort of Vassalari mounts twelve guns, three of which are of that remarkably useful piece of ordnance, the Turkish Lacorn. I have offered to deliver the fort of Vassalari to General Church upon his remunerating for their services those employed in taking it. I have the honour to be, etc., F. A. Hastings. List of small vessels employed in taking Vassalari. A Mystico, Galaxidioti, Captain Ergski. The same went with me into the Gulf of Lepanto, and who has served with me ever since. A Mystico, Galaxioti, a Bonny, an armed rowboat, two of my prize launches, each armed with a nine-pounder, a Brul Sikra, five Malaxolis, or canoes for the shallows. 31. Caterina, Dragonestra, January the 7th, 1828. My lord, I have the honour to acquaint you that General Church arrived before Vasilidi on the second instant, and I resigned to him that fort on the third requesting him to refund the expenses of taking it. These consist of five dollars per man bounty, besides the provisions of the flotilla employed in the blockade. The general has promised to repay this, although not without expressing some surprise at the demand, yet the guns he receives in the fort would pay the whole sum. On the same day I received an official letter from General Church requesting me to inform him what cooperation he might expect from the Navy in a projected attack of his on Anatolico. According to the wish of General Church, I agreed to send all the boats at my disposal that night to attempt to capture an island named Poros, commanding the entrance in the lake of Anticolo, where the Turks had a post, and we heard he was filling up the passage and about to place guns on another island, which would render him entirely the master of the entrance. I soon discovered that what General Church calls the cooperation of the Navy is in reality the Navy executing the service and the Army looking on at its leisure, ready to take possession if success attended the arms of the former. I had understood that I was to be supported by two rocket boats of General Church and by the launch of the Siren Brig, carrying a carronade to throw grenades. But these did not appear. A dozen Policaris arrived from General Church and were embarked in the expedition. At half-past three a.m. of the fourth instant, I arrived with five boats out of nine, the rest having unaccountably kept behind at a narrow part of the passage of the lake, across which the Turks had built a wall and stationed a gunboat behind it. The Turkish boat was soon put to flight. The sailors, jumping into the water, soon cleared away a passage for the boats, and five of our boats rowed upon Poros, the Turks keeping up a brisk fire of musketry from that island and of cannon from Anatolico. We were now within pistol shot of Poros when I found, to my surprise, a fort on it, which I had been assured there was not, or I would not have attempted the attack, knowing that in our warfare... Their holds are not to be thus taken. Seeing no reasonable hope of succeeding, I ordered a retreat, and having repassed by the way we entered, found General Church's detachment lying flat in the bottom of their boats out of gunshot. 
to say that my officers, Captain Haines, M.A., and Lieutenant Falanga, also Monsieur Fabricus, commanding the gunboat, Helvetia, accompanied me, is to commend them for their accustomed zeal and gallantry. I cannot conclude without mentioning the name Crescento, who, after having aided at Vassaladi, was with me here in his own boat and displayed much courage. He had one man wounded, the only loss we sustained. Perceiving that Antelico was not to be taken by us, that General Church's troops were, without provisions, somewhere in a marsh, where our boats could not get to embark them, and that they might have marched on the mainland close to Antilico, being without provisions in this ship, and seeing no possibility of rendering any service by remaining any longer before Vassaladi, I returned to this port to provide for our immediate wants and in hopes of meeting Dr. Goss and procuring from him some funds for the maintenance of my crew, which I think your lordship will see the necessity of providing me with, as I have not received more than $2,000 during five months, and I have latterly been maintaining the ship in provisions and fuel, besides furnishing money and provisions to the gunboat and flotilla inside Vassaladi. I have the honour to be, etc., F. A. Hastings. End of Appendix. Recording by Timothy Ferguson, Gold Coast, Australia. End of the Life of Thomas, Lord Cochrane, Tenth Earl of Dundonald, completing the Autobiography of Seaman, Volume 2, by Henry Richard Foxbourne and others.